Christian spirituality arises from the wisdom tradition in the Jewish and Christian scriptures, but it can be found all over the world. So let's talk about it. Hello, my fellow wayfarers on the Paths of Wisdom. My name is Charlie, and today we are going to be talking about creation spirituality, kind of in very broad strokes, and I will be going into more detail about some of these aspects in future videos. They will be in a playlist on the channel, and it should be linked in the, in the video at the end. What is creation spirituality? Creation spirituality in short, changes our focus from the act of original sin back to the moment of creation, because it's very important for us to remember, and God said, Kitov, all is good. It is good. It is good. It is good. Kitov, Kitov, Kitov. It is good. The world was created good. And we can talk about the fall, we can talk about fall redemption, but the problem with all of that is that it focuses on the innate flaws of reality. It teaches us that we are broken, that we are damaged, and that we are no good. It is a system of control that weaves itself into our minds and tells us that we are nothing. And while I'm not here to do a lot of puffery and to say that we're the greatest things in the universe, because it's important to have humility and to know where you stand as an infinitesimal speck in this enormous universe. It's also important to know that you are not refuse. And this is the problem with the fall redemption model of creation. This is the problem with original sin. And original sin is a topic that we really don't get into until Augustine, who really pushed this idea that the sin of Adam, that the stain of Adam, punished all humankind. Now, this narrative is problematic on many levels, and we can talk about that if you all want to. But simply put, it is really hard to grapple with that, given the world that we have and given the world that we actually experience. Everything is evil. Everything is corrupt. Everything is bad. No, no. We are, as the Heart Sutra says, neither good nor bad, neither stained nor pure. And this is something that we see throughout the Christian scriptures, the Jewish scriptures, and throughout the literature of all paths of wisdom throughout the world, that we are not one or the other, though we can become stained and we can become pure. These are states that we can occupy, but not ones that are native to the human species. They're not one that is innate to who we are. So first and foremost, creation spirituality rejects the paradigm of fall redemption thinking, mainly because we are not about setting things opposed to each other. We are about seeing commonality. Within the idea of creation spirituality, what we are talking about more than anything is understanding that the world is complicated, the world is complex, and the same is true when we talk about spiritual matters. Nothing is really cut and dry. Nothing is as simple as, here, let me tell you the one thing that you need to know so that you understand everything. That's a very dangerous way of thinking, partially because it stops you from asking questions, and questions are the source of all wisdom, but also because it encourages you to think that you have achieved some pinnacle of knowledge where you can look down on others who aren't at your level. And that's not how any of this works. We are all pilgrims. We are all wayfarers on the path. We are all seeking to find truth. As the Apostle Paul says, we are here to seek our own salvation in fear and trembling. We are here to test all things and hold to that which is true. In so doing, we do not accept anything simply because it is handed down to us. We believe that for a tradition to truly be alive, it has to be alive. It has to be interpreted and reinterpreted in every generation. You have to find your own words. You have to find your own meaning, your own purpose in the text, in the tradition. The tradition has to stay vibrant and living, or it will fall away and it will die. 
The tradition that our ancestors grew up with is not the one that we need today. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have any of the complexities of modern life. They didn't have cars. They didn't have grocery stores that they could just go to and find food. They didn't have capitalistic systems that dominated their lives and told them how they should work, pray, and live. They also didn't have access to a lot of the modern medical miracles that we do today. So when the apostles said, when someone is sick, anoint them with oil, prayer was often the best thing that they had. They would be given the medicines of the time, but very often prayer and the laying on of hands was the best that they could hope for. Today, we have science, we have technology, and those help us out. Those are equally gifts of God, and anybody who doesn't understand that really neglects what God has given us. So the easiest way to understand creation spirituality is that it divides all experiences of life and spirituality, of mysticism, of prophecy, and of creativity into four distinct paths. We have the via positiva, the positive way, the way of bliss, as I often say. This is, to me, I think of Joseph Campbell saying, follow your bliss. When you follow your bliss, you walk the via positiva, the positive way. This is where we encounter the creative word of God, the power that moves through us, through our speech, through our imagination, and through our action, where we learn the art of savoring creation, where we learn about cosmic hospitality and how we are to be hospitable, not just to our fellow humans, but to the other animals, plants, and to the earth itself. This is where we learn to see the realm of God, the kingdom of God that is stretched out among us and learn to live within it. Many of us, though, experience the second path more readily. And, th and this is the via negativa, the negative way, the way of darkness, the way of silence. In the via negativa, we learn to let go and let be. We learn to endure our pain and our hardship. We learn that nothing lasts forever and all things end. It is the place of silence. When you are singing a hymn, when you are chanting a chant, when you are speaking in prayer, you are giving life, you are giving word, you are giving spirit to the Via Positiva. When you sit in quiet contemplation, when you sit in deep meditation, you are entering the Via Negativa. When you are suffering, when you are in pain, these are the path of the Via Negativa. The third path is the Via Creativa, the creative way. And in the Via Creativa, we learn to ride our dreams into reality, to trust the images that are born in us, and the strength rises in us to give birth of them into the world. In the Via Creativa, we experience God as both mother and child. As the Apostle Paul said, in labor with you until Christ Jesus be born in you. This is our great task in this world, to not only be the body of Christ, to be the hands of the Savior, but to give birth, to give rise to him in this world, to bring that compassion, that love, and that mercy to everyone that we meet and into every action that we do. This is where we do art and music and poetry and song. In the fourth path, the Via Transformativa, we take on the full attributes of the prophets. We speak out for justice, for change, for making the world a better place. We work towards Olam Tikkun. We perform the acts of restoration and reparation in this world. Because, again, as the Apostle Paul says, we are called to a ministry of reconciliation. This is what we are here on this planet to do, to find the sparks of the divine and to raise them back to their place in the heavenlies, to restore what is broken and to fix what we can. This is the great task of life, to perform tikkun, restoration, to perform teshuva, repentance, where we learn to change our minds and change ourselves for the better. These are the tasks that we set about doing, and you cannot have one without the other. There is no restoring the world without repentance, and there is no repentance without restoring the world. You have to do the work on yourself before you can change the world around you. And sometimes they coincide, but often one precedes the other. Now, these are not a linear path. We do not go from one to the next to the next in a straight line. 
Instead, it is a great spiral dance that I refer to as the middle way, where we find ourselves with a foot on this path and a foot on that path, sometimes a foot astride them, and we stand in multiples at the same time. As we experience these paths and understanding how they work, how they give us tools to understand the world and our spirituality, we come to understand even more fully how we operate in this world. We lose that feeling of being lost because we see that we've got a foot in the via negativa and a foot in the via transformativa. We have to learn to let go and to change and make new or whichever state you're standing in. These are the things we are going to be talking about on this channel. We're going to talk about the principles of creation spirituality next, and then we're going to get into a lot of other topics. I welcome your questions. I welcome them, but please be compassionate and be kind because that is all that can be asked of us in this world is that we have compassion one for another. So please let me know what you think about this topic, about this video, and if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Put them down in the comments. And if you did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and may you have a blessed day as we together listen for Wisdom's Cry. Until next time.